Hey there, welcome. In this video, you're going to be watching a panel that I was a member of at Black Hat 2022. We pick it up about one third of the way through the panel because of some audio issues. And in it, me and two other industry professionals are talking about cybersecurity in the metaverse, specifically around privacy, authority, and what type of attacks you can absolutely guarantee expect to see in the metaverse. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Cyber criminals use the dark web to conduct illegal activities anonymously and privately. They use underground forums accessible through specialized web browsers. As metaverse technology advances, cyber criminals may use it to replace the dark web. Instead of meeting on underground forums, criminals will be able to virtually walk into a metaverse dark web market. These hidden corners of the metaverse will become the darkverse. Into the darkverse. Exploring the dark side of the metaverse. Here's how the dark verse works. Dark verse spaces will be in secure locations, accessible only to those with the proper authentication tokens. Communication will be limited to proximity based messaging. These marketplaces will facilitate all types of illegal activity, such as selling malware, buying stolen data or even planning for real-world crimes. Given the authentication restrictions, law enforcement agencies will find it difficult to break into the Darkverse. The Metaverse is a new landscape with opportunities for businesses, social media platforms, and entertainment companies. Unfortunately, cyber criminals will also take advantage of this new technology for their own activities. To learn more about the Darkverse and other security issues connected to the Metaverse, visit research.trendmicro.com forward slash Metaverse. Hello everyone and welcome back. We want to thank you for your patience while we deal with some technical gremlins. Apparently William Shatner saw something on the wing. We had to stop and get it off. But everything looks good now. And if you got that reference, I really appreciate you at 30,000 feet. So one of the problems that we were having is that uh, Jerry's mic wasn't working. So I wanted to offer a chance for Jerry to go ahead and bring us back in with some of the great points you were making, but maybe didn't get heard as much. So Jerry, what were those points? Yeah, thank you, Dustin. So really the two key takeaways uh, from that first segment is that I really expect uh, cybersecurity attacks in the metaverse to really begin going hard and heavy right off the rip around fraud. There is over $800 billion projected into the metaverse by 2028. And when you have real dollars, real threat actors get right. really involved. The other thing that I really uh, want people to take away from this particular talk as individuals is that the whole concept of privacy needs to really be rethought um, mm -hmm. from ground zero in the metaverse. There's no sovereign laws that apply in the metaverse. There is no, like, when you're operating in the metaverse, everything about what you're looking at, what you're seeing, what rooms you're entering, what mannerisms, the biomarkers of the headgear as it's monitoring you, all of those things are being pushed as, you know, big data to uh, the organizations that are responsible, you know, and we all know the big names. Uh, and that data is going to be curated, enriched, and used for uh, capitalistic purposes. And why wouldn't? There's no reason for them not to collect that data right now. Yeah, and even right. beyond that, I just, something I also I just thought of. I mean, we've seen so many times where law enforcement has maybe overreached with their uh, data acquisition, asking people to, whether it be doorbell cameras being handed over or other conversations people thought were private. Uh, is that going to be something we see too, where law enforcement is like, hey, you were in this room, uh, show me all of the the chats from this metaverse conversation you had. Does that sound something yeah, like it happened? I think absolutely. You know, when you, uh, when law enforcement gets a search warrant, for instance, mm -hmm. okay, the, the judge, at least in the United States, will direct what you need to see. But if anything is out in the open, law enforcement it can freely take it, okay? Right. So what's the definition of out in the open in the metaverse? Everything, Everything is, is pretty much is in the pretty open. Pretty much yeah. in the open. So that's why um, privacy is a, is a thing of the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Privacy is a thing of the past. People need to really understand and accept that. We have given away our privacy in exchange 
for the convenience of information, for the convenience of entertainment, for the convenience of communicating with our friends and, and family, all right? And with that, you need to manage, understand what you are giving away. And this is a, you know, I know we're going to talk a little bit about how business models changes, yeah. but this is a very important aspect of how business is changing. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question is like, how do you think business models will shift? And we've talked about individuals in the metaverse now, but let's right. talk about businesses. So business models, I mean, they have to shift in the era of the metaverse. What's that going to look like? Uh, and it, one person's like, how do we deliver pizzas in the metaverse? And I don't know if that's <laughs> the best thing, but yeah, it's like, how do we how do we deliver goods and services in the metaverse? And how do businesses monetize that in a way that doesn't drain their resources, whether it be cash or time or whatever? What is the business model especially a secure business model in the in metaverse look like? So um, I actually believe that the business models are going to flip 180, okay. right? Because today the organizations, the companies are collecting data, curating that data, and leveraging that data to resell to you. Right. You need to take control of your data. And the, the business models are going to change to reward you for the data that you're giving to them. Right. And to reward you more for the amount of data and the type of data that they are asking for. So the business model is going to be how much do I need to give you right. to monitor you 24-7, 365? How much will I need to give you to have that headset take a copy of your brain waves consistently, mm -hmm. even right. when you're sleeping, all right? Yeah. So the, the, the companies and organizations <coughs> that understand that flip, all right, are going to create business models that incentivize you to give up your data and eliminate <laughs> privacy completely. Mm -hmm. Jerry, where do you see this going from your point of view? Yeah, so two things popped in my head right away. I, I was thinking, as soon as you said this, goods and services, and I know that there's you know, virtual assets and Snoop Dogg buys a $500 million yacht or a piece of property <laughs> in the metaverse. But I, I recently, um, if you read Ready Player One or watched the movie Ernest Klein's novel about the oasis in the metaverse in the near future, right. um, you know, you could purchase uh, a pizza virtually using cryptocurrency and then have it physically delivered to you in real life. And we're already seeing the idea of you know, Amazon delivering via drones. So it, it doesn't take much of a leap for a business process for the sales cycle to include a pop-up in the metaverse, a quick touch, make the transaction, and then, you know, 24 hours later, it's yeah. at your front door, right? Yeah. And, and, and to Kevin's point, if they're, if they're harvesting all this data, they want you in the metaverse as long as possible, <laughs> right? So they don't want you to take it off in order to make that transaction. They want it as yeah. frictionless, as possible. And if I may, the other thing that came to mind right away, now that was the consumer side. Let's talk about the actual business side. If you go all in on metaverse, right? Like that's your business, right? You're a SaaS provider, but your solution is offered in the metaverse. Ransomware right now is hands down the most you know, financially lucrative and devastating oh, yeah. uh, yes. attack out there. It's a billion dollar industry. Billion dollar industry. My, my initial thought immediately is like, okay, so if you're a cloud service provider, but you offer service in the metaverse, I want to ransomware you because if people cannot get to your platform, whatever it is in the metaverse, you're not generating revenue and you're actually losing market share is because people are just going to go somewhere else. Right. They don't, yeah. you know, yeah. people don't have patience for that. So you, you better believe um, that they're going to pay. And we just saw uh, Axie Infinity get hit allegedly by Lazarus Group for, to the tune of $560 million. They just moved on and reimbursed the victims of the Axie Infinity Ronin Bridge their wow. money and moved on. That's a huge hit to just pay back the money and keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. real that's money. Right off. That's real money. Yeah, that's exactly. It's real money. That's not made up Dogecoin or whatever mm -hmm. that's, you know, uh, kind of in the ether uh, to use a pun there. But <clears throat> yeah, so it's real money. So I, I guess that's my second question is you, you kind of lead into this is how are brands going to be attacked in the metaverse? And you said one example there. What are some other ways, uh, Jerry, that, that, that brands are going to be attacked and what are they going to have to think of for their defenses? Because we think of like, you know, in traditional cyber, it's like, oh, there's a perimeter. There's, you know, our internal sites. There's, you know, intranet, internet, you know, mm -hmm. these things. There's AB. Like, what is 
in, if your business is in the metaverse, what are you going to have to, what, uh, what are those things that you're going to have to do? Yeah, with? well, so another top attack and something that I really think people are going to need to give serious consideration for, and unfortunately there isn't a lot of subject matter expertise on how to secure the metaverse right now, right. is a play on business email compromise. And this is one of those ones where I think you can take the, the nuances and the novelty and the newness of metaverse and apply it here where, you know, to, to coin a term, business avatar compromise. Oh. If you're regularly engaging your business people because you work remotely but you all work in this metaverse uh, office and the CEO walks in and says, hey, I need you to wire this money to XYZ, classic business email compromise attack, why would you question it? if? The CEO is there and you interact with them every yeah, day, yeah. right? Now, that could be uh, a stolen avatar, so I got your uh, the, the identity yeah, to Kevin's identity, point at the yes. beginning, or I just copy-paste your avatar's skin, right? So right. now we need to have uh, a term that you coined the other day, Dustin, a non-fungible non avatar. avatar. Yeah, that's right, patent <laughs> bending, patent bending. Which is an innovation that doesn't even exist yet, but it's solving a problem that we, as subject matter experts, are predicting will occur. Yes. Yeah, well, one of the things that uh, I've been looking at, uh, and I guess many organizations have, is the lack of security around devices. And now you're talking about the lack of security around an avatar. And I think this is really going into the realm of advanced phishing. Right? <laughs> okay, it's, it's just phishing in the metaverse. When Wait, you, would that be mishing? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, mishing, I guess. Uh, new term. Meta mission. Meta mission. Yeah. <laughs> but but really, the um, the the multiple channels that you're interacting with in the metaverse simultaneously are, are really multiple threat vectors after your data and, and your information. Mm -hmm. um, and there is no such thing, or hasn't been a perimeter. For years, right? All right. Yeah. Um, so, so the other aspect of protecting your data is um, how do you how do you protect it? Encryption. You know, so so far they say that you need to encrypt all your data when it's in motion, when it's at rest, and even when it's in use. The the use of homomorphic encryption. Mm -hmm within the metaverse is going to be critical. And if you don't know what that is, that's being able to encrypt your data and do, then do actions on that data without decrypting the data. And that's the only way forward when it comes to zero trust yes. and protection of your data in the metaverse. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, to, to really pull on what I expect to be a, a real problem is access to that data. So to take what we see today, we regularly see leaky S3 buckets or leaky, oh, yes. leaky yes. databases that people access publicly online. And part of the reason that those databases are leaky is because industry doesn't necessarily have the subject matter experts working on configuring cloud assets securely. You know, it's the older uh, network engineer who's got 20 years right. of experience of on-prem infrastructure security. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, you know leveling up and, 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 and securing the cloud. But the thing is, map it forward. Now when you have like a, a metaverse S3 bucket or whatever, <laughs> that needs to be configured with the appropriate access controls. And if we're already seeing it in the you know, two-dimensional verse, if you will. Right, yeah, right, Why yeah. wouldn't it happen in the metaverse? It's a more complicated problem to solve. Exactly. You know, it's, it's interesting you bring up the open S3 buckets. It's something we see as well in the zero-day initiative that's really disrupting the exploit economy because why are you going to spend a half a million dollars to buy a zero-day when you have open S3 buckets right there? You can just go get all their data for free. Yeah. You know, right. why, why buy the cow if I'm getting the milk for free? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I'm very interested to see what the exploit economy is going to look like in the metaverse too. So I could see an exploit where you talk about cloning an avatar, mm -hmm. like what does that go for on the street? Like a, a reliable avatar clone. Is that going to be worth $20,000? Is it going to be worth how many, you know, crypto, coin, whatever? It'll be interesting to see the criminal elements and th that economy flourish, because I'm sure it will flourish yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the metaverse. I, 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 could, I could almost imagine a, a, a tiering system, right? So like Elon Musk's avatar oh, probably yeah. goes for a higher uh, ticket that right. you know my avatar, but maybe I have a cool exclusive Trend Micro sweatshirt right. that you can't get because it's an NFT, and now you rip off 
my avatar and it's worth some money. The same way OG Twitter accounts are. Yeah. Well, well, one thing I, I wonder about, I mean, do you wear the same clothes every day? Of course not. No, no. Of course, you want to, you know, uh, you change it, not because it smells, because you want to look different. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right? Don't you think people are going to change their avatar? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, they're going right. to change to reflect their mood or with a day or exactly. weather or whatever. Exactly. And just like you change your password every 30 days, mm -hmm. maybe you'll start changing your avatar every 30 days. Mm -hmm. All right? So what does that do? to the metaverse mm -hmm. when you need you you're, you're modifying your look the way you interact the, uh, it, it, it really puts a different spin on security yeah. Yeah. Uh, across the entire metaverse yeah that's interesting kind of going back to what you said about the uh, CEO avatar showing up what if it, your avatar uh, an avatar shows up and they look different how can you be sure that's actually the real person yeah. just in different avatar clothes? Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's essentially an erosion of trust because we have kind of implicit trust because, I, you know, I, I met you the other day. Now I, kind of, now I kind of know you. I work with you every day. I know what your mannerisms are. I know my level of trust with you. Um, and, yeah, you're 100% right. If your avatar looks different. And we're talking about clothes, but, again, we're mapping real world physical things into the metaverse yes. one to one and that's right. not the case i could be a, a, a mailbox next week yeah right? you, like i don't have be to be a minotaur human. yeah or yeah you go back exactly. to your uh, ready player one uh, reference you know in oasis you could be whatever you could be a minotaur you could be an elf you could be a dwarf you could be you know fantasy creatures or, yeah. or whatever so yeah it, it doesn't have and, to be and an that's person. part that's part of the lure of the metaverse yes you yep. can be anything you want exactly yeah. <laughs> and yes. why not be invisible what? Yeah. Right? Why and that introduces invisible? some confidentiality issues, right? Yeah. Exactly. Once again, you have no more privacy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, the erosion of privacy is definitely gone. The erosion of privacy. Uh, definitely gone. Will that be illegal? <laughs> well, should it be illegal to be invisible in a metaverse? Well, and, and really the question is, legal or not illegal, who's the ruling authority to define that legislation? That was going to be my next question. Is We talked about there well, not being any re regulation of this right now. There obviously is going to end up being something, uh, maybe not GDPR, maybe some, but something uh, that's going to govern, for lack of a better word, the metaverse. No. I, I don't know. Is that going to happen, or are we, uh, are we not going to have any regulations on it at all? The blunt answer is no. Okay. <laughs> what regulate? What global regulation do we have to manage prob private data today in yeah. the United States? Okay, it's supposed to be the beacon. Right? There is no GDPR equivalent. Right. Um, your data is free game. People will say, well, what about HIPAA? What about finance? Well, there are all industry vertical specific laws for the protection of data. Of data. There is no general uh, law to protect your data. The United Nations. There have been multiple proposals to have a global law on the protection of data and the protection of privacy. Have they acted? No. The next question is, what is the definition of private data? Right. Oh, okay. In one country, you could get killed because your religion is provided. In other countries, you could be killed because of where you live, all right? Because there, there hasn't been any global law enforced. It can't be enforced, right? And that's going to be the same in the metaverse. That, that's very true. Uh, and Jerry, I want to kind of offer this to you too, because I know you've done some work with NIST. What are some standards that at least the industry could po propose? I mean, is NIST something where we could look to? Uh, can we look to ICANN? Where, where are we going to look for? even just some standardization if we don't have legislation. Yeah, so it's a really good question. It is a really sticky topic, again, because there's no geographical boundary. That, right. Like, literally the paradigm for defining law and legislation is completely revamped. Uh, a couple things that come to mind, yeah, you could do NIST, but I really honestly feel because of the, the, the money that big tech has, and they are literally the driving force, as I mentioned earlier, $800 billion coming from, like, Decentraland, Sandbox, right. uh, Axie Infinity. So it's going to really require a, in my opinion, public sector, so government, 
private sector, big tech specifically, and then higher ed, academia, uh, to really come together and actually define how they're going to do these things. And, and it's going to be a slow moving slog. Unfortunately, regulations, bureaucracy, they've, they've always moved slow and tech moves way faster, right? Oh, and, yeah. and Jen Easterly at CIS is doing a good job of expediting some things now. But uh, I, could, I could see at a long term play, the United States just uh, on Monday announced that the, um, they have basically assigned a United States ambassador to the cyberverse. I think his name is Ken Finks. Um, so now they have a, a direct Department of State foreign affairs person who is representing the United States within the metaverse. I could see some other kind of you know G20 type countries yeah, doing yeah. this and then begin to come together. And you said UN, I wrote it down here in my notes. I could actually see a cyber UN where you start to form a faction of power and first world countries that start defining these standards. And then if you don't want to adhere to them, well then we're going to start introducing technical limitations for your ability to access certain services in the metaverse. Well, one thing that we're the, you know, talk about right now is the actual fracturing of the internet. Right. A lot of the services depend upon there being a single internet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if the internet can fracture, can't the metaverse fracture? Yeah. Now, what, yeah. Does, what does that do to laws and rules and standards, all right? Today, when I go from one country to another, I got to, you know, you know, check the internet to figure out what type of flag I need to <laughs> carry with me. Yeah. because. They still don't have standardization in electricity, uh, for goodness sake. Um, that will happen in the multiverse, too. Okay, great. And uh, we've got some people joining us online, so uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, they got a couple questions as well. Joy shared her question on Twitter. How will users know whether they're interacting with a real person or a bot? That's an interesting question. We, we deal with chatbots all the time right now. I dealt with a chatbot at my hotel asking to get my room clean. That was interesting. Um, a little different, but yeah, once we go online, how do, how do we know that we're talking to an individual and not a bot? Yeah, and you can definitely assume bots are going to be there, automation is going to be there, uh, just for speed, efficacy, and honestly, uh, reduce overhead for the business for labor costs, right? Um, you won't be able to tell if it's a bot. I only, I only think that you would have uh, a chance in the metaverse because um, there is knowledge that we all have uh, that's tacit knowledge that it's very difficult to explain, right? You can't explain to me how to drive a car well. You can't tell me how you recognize someone's face, right? But you know how to, know how to do it. And the same should be uh, seen in the metaverse, I would expect, because yeah, you could program a bot to do things, but you would think that there would be some kind of inkling or some kind of, like, something off about it. And I know that they're getting better and better at making it more realistic. Yes. Right, but right. I, I really feel it's probably one of the... <laughs> One of the few benefits for practitioners that the metaverse is going to offer us is that you'll be able to absorb and, and read nonverbal cues and understand, like, you know, they're, they're walking into the wall and it's clipping or whatever. Like, that's not normal behavior, right? Um, so we do have a we have a puncher's chance in the metaverse to detect bots. Yeah, there's still that uncanny valley that they have to overcome. Yeah. But what's wrong with interacting with a bot? Okay, why do we have to hide that it's the bot yeah. today? I interact with thousands of people online, mm -hmm. all right, and I actually may use a bot yeah. to manage my network and my communication. Sure. So why wouldn't I have a bot avatar to work with you? Because I'm just busy. Yeah, all exactly. Right? So I'm not going to hide the fact that it's a bot. I'm going to say they're going to introduce themselves as I'm Kevin's bot. Yeah. Kevin is busy right now. Can I help you? Okay. What's wrong with that? It's not just organization. Right. So um, I believe you you will interact with bots, and you'll know that they're a bot. Oh, hopefully you will know. I mean, <clears throat> we interact with, with, it's understood that you have some automation, especially online yeah. now, if you're going to do this. So I, I think as long as it's it's easily identifiable that it's a bot, it's certainly not a bad thing to me. Yeah. Uh, to, Half the time, I mean, we use self-checkout counters. That's a bot. That's a bot. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. that's a bot. Most of us prefer it because it's like, I don't want to talk to a person. I just want to scan my lettuce and leave. Yeah, you know? so, so bots are going to be a normal way of 
living in the metaverse. Yeah. Well, and, and if I may, like we, we are we are championing bots and the value of bots and the soci sociological acceptance of bots and the way we interact. But there has been um, actual cases that have happened just recently where bots are actually being released into Discord servers and Telegram servers, and they're basically automating fraud, right? So yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll attack, victimize, and pull the money all automated while the hacker's on a, a beach. So, you know, it, we're talking about the, the, the benefits of bots, but I could see that attack, you know, perpetrating yes. equally in, in the metaverse. Yeah. That's the metaverse part, right? That is That's the, the metaverse. metaverse. <laughs> All right, we got another question here. Uh, in this case, is Ben, who has shared a question from YouTube. His question was, how will users active, uh, how will user activity and speech be moderated in the metaverse? Right. And I think what we're, we're saying so far is not going to be a lot of moderation unless you're going into a specific room or something or specific yeah. world. So um, the whole concept of private and public disappear when uh, you're in the metaverse. All right. right. Um, Moderation of communication could be spoofed, could yes. be faked. All right. So you all need to assume at all times that anyone can record uh, the communications or, or what you're doing anywhere in, in a metaverse, and you will have to own up to what you do and what you say, because, like they just say, it, nothing. Disappears on the internet. Nothing well, disappears on the nothing internet. Nothing disappears on the metaverse. Except that one video I saw that one time. <laughs> but, uh, Jerry? Yeah, I mean, this question is great, Ben, and thank you for asking it. I really think that the, the underpinning of the entire problem that we're going to face with this question is that there is no laws, there is no regulation, right. there is no rules to define what is acceptable and what is unacceptable. It's almost like Lord of the Flies, where yes. like the, the group decides what is socially <laughs> acceptable and then they outcast the ones yeah, that don't go yeah. with the same. I'm afraid I'm going to be piggy in that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I mean, we have seen we have seen instances where people have been um, you know violated in ways that they did not like, and right. they were unable to take any real legal recourse, um, and they were basically forced out. They had to leave, even though they were the victim. Yeah. They had to leave that experience, which is totally unfair. Um, it, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, we even see today on the internet pockets of the internet um, where there's, you know, independent speech, if you want to call it that, that's really polarizing around really specific, right. yeah. negative, nasty um, topics. Um, there's no reason, again, mapping it one in, you know, extrapolating it up into the metaverse, there's no reason to expect that content to not be there. The, the, the challenge will be um, being able to inform users of the metaverse on where it is and how to avoid it if it's not your if it's not your bag. Yeah. Well, you know, one, one thing we have to actually think about and understand is that laws, regulations, the norms are established by society. And as society changes, mm -hmm. those laws change as right. well. The, so something that was unlawful, illegal, and you would think people wouldn't do a hundred years ago are actually commonplace today exactly, and, yeah. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that goes along with the generational change. So how fast do we have societal generational change? Yeah. All right? In the physical world, it's a lot slower. In the metaverse, it will be a lot be even faster. faster. Yeah. Yeah. And you talk about the, the Lord of the Flies. Think about how fast the a fly generation changes yeah. every 14 days. Yeah. Okay. How fast will society, what's acceptable, change in the metaverse? Okay. How will that? How fast would the quote laws or norms mm -hmm. change in the in the metaverse? We don't know, but I would believe it's going to be much faster than we expect. Yes. And much faster than we experience in the physical world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a really, really good point. And uh, I, w I feel like we could go on talking about this for quite a while, but unfortunately we are running out of time. No, not I, I know we're like, we hit the top of the hour and it's like, oh man, we could just sit here and keep talking until my back wears out. Uh, <laughs> we've had such great conversation. I want to thank you both. Kevin and Jerry for being here. Thank you. Uh, thank it, you. it has been a really great conversation. I think we've we've covered a lot of topics. I think we've had some really good stuff. I want to thank you all for joining us too. 
Uh, and if you want to learn more about uh, the Darkverse, uh, you can hit us up at research.trendlifero.com slash metaverse. The link should be in the description down below, I believe. If not, Kevin will put it up here or someplace. Uh, and hey, uh, finally, we want to hear from you more. So weigh in with your thoughts on Twitter. Uh, you can use the hashtag VHUSA uh, on LinkedIn. Let us know what your thoughts on the metaverse or the metaverse are. And uh, if you're around Black Hat, please come by and say hello. And if not, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Have a good one.